Welcome, everyone, to Odds and Ends, Life, Entertainment, Theater, and the Arts. I am Andrew Kozlowski, and with me is my good friend, soon to be joining us. He is our co-host, the great bass player and music producer, and Mr. Cool himself. There he is, Mr. Clyde Bullard. Clyde, how are you? What's happening? Good. What's happening, my brother? How you doing, man? Uh, I was Marvin Gaye used to say, what's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Well, we got something special going on tonight, that's for okay. sure. We have a very special guest, folks. We're going to get right to it. Our guest has been nominated for Helen Hayes and Jeff Awards as Monroe in Pullman Porter Blues. He's been featured in 15 Broadway productions, including Porgy and Bess, for which he was nominated for a Tony and Drama Desk Award and awarded a Grammy for his portrayal of Sport and Life. In 1973, he starred in the movie version of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Jesus Christ Superstar, playing Simon Zealots. And in 1984, he turned in an outstanding performance, portraying Cab Calloway in the critically acclaimed film, The Cotton Club. Ladies and gentlemen, here is just a small taste of this truly special artist, Mr. Larry Marshall. That is something you can listen to over and over again. Yes, you can. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring him on, Mr. Larry Marshall. Larry, welcome to Odds and Ends Life Entertainment Theater and the Arts. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me. Beautiful. Well, we're thrilled to have you with us tonight. Uh, I guess uh, we ask all our guests this question lately, not one we enjoy, but obviously we uh, a lot of people out there want to know how you're handling the pandemic and uh, what's, what's, how's it affected you personally? Well, um, I'm handling, I'm handling it a day at a time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just, whatever comes, come, but no, I, I've, I've been pretty cool through this whole thing. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, if you follow the guidelines of what you're supposed to do as far as keep protecting yourself, um, six feet apart, you know, um, um, the whole stay at home and, you know, keeping yourself, uh, you know, uh, uh, washing your hands, keeping your hygiene, keeping that straight. Um, and um, so far, um, what uh, I've found is um, that that's, that served me well, you know. I uh, get out um, in the neighborhood. I live in Staten Island, so get out for a walk. And I'll, I'll get out for a uh, ride by my, my bike. But, uh, you know, basically keeping to myself uh, at a distance. My neighbors, you know, <laughs> well, here in Staten Island, they, they've, they've, a lot of people have almost have gotten to the point of like it's over. So they're, they're gathering together. We see them, but they're, they're you know, it's, it, uh, it's um, you know, it's kind of disconcerting to see all that and uh, thinking about having it spread. You know, I've had uh, a niece uh, who contracted it? She's she's all right. Uh, she's g gotten over it. And then, and then uh, my cousin's uh, daughter, uh, who's a nurse, uh, she uh, had to deal with it herself. And uh, but they've both pulled through it. So um, you know, it's uh, nothing to play with. But you right, know, you right. just have to you just have to um, keep to the guidelines of what keeps you safe. You know. Um, <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. Certainly heard has it. affected a lot of people work wise on, on oh yeah marks, yeah right? yeah yeah very much so. But as a saying that I love that I came across, uh, I heard uh, which is like uh, um, uh, resting at home is better than rest in peace. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, hey. that's at my age. I'm resting at home, brother. <laughs> hey, Larry, I, I want to say, you know, as a musician, uh, we can practice our instruments at home. We can keep our chops pretty hot, pretty tight. What do you do as an actor when you can't act on stage? How do you keep your brain and your memory sharp so you can remember all well, these lines? Yeah, well, um, you know, I... Um... <laughs> I'm surprised every time I'm able to remember them. <laughs> no, no, but no, not really. I, you know, I mean, you have different. Um, I'm, I'm not even thinking of that. I've been busy. That's the thing. Um, I've done two readings 
um, uh, online uh, by Zoom, you know, um, uh, with uh, uh, a, a piece called um, Chasing God by um, Paris Creighton. And uh, it's for the New York rep, uh, Marcus Potter, who was directing it. And, um, and how many people were involved we, in the we had we, we had done a, we'd done a reading, you know, table reading and a presentation of right. it. And um, they were like looking for a theater. Uh, at the time, and then uh, Paris uh, wanted to do uh, some tightening up on the second act, and so um, w he got uh, some of the actors together, you know, that he could get a hold of, and uh, we did a table reading of it again, uh, and then, um, you know, Jerry Dixon? Um, I know of, yeah. Yeah, know yeah, yeah. Person, yeah. Well, well, Jerry um, has, uh, he has an um, artistic director of a theater, out in Seattle, but uh, and I can't remember the name of it uh, right now. But uh, he uh, has uh, picked up um, uh, the the piece uh, about Frederick Douglass called Douglass and the music by Sheldon Beckton. Uh, Beckton, you know, uh, and uh, so um, I had a reading of that online on uh, doing Zoom. How's and, it working? Is it working out okay? Uh, y well, you know, no glitches, no glitches. Oh, what, uh, with the readings? No, the, read, the, the only glitching that would happen would, <laughs> hmm. would be uh, when, you know, like with, um, with uh, um, uh, 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 Douglas, uh, Jerry wanted us to, the, the ensemble, um, wanted everybody, because we were doing uh, parts and ensemble and all that, to read. Of course, we weren't going to sing the songs. You know, we had, uh, we, we had heard the music, which is really good. But um, uh, during um, the, the, in October, we had the reading. But so he wanted us to read the lyrics. And so everybody started reading. But then everybody had these uh, different time lapses, you know, from yeah. when, when they say the word and you say yours. And so it was like, it was, it reminded me of kind of a, a, a John Cage kind of presentation yeah. or Charles Ives, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it was, or, or Robert Wilson, you know, very avant-garde with all the, you know, yes. if you could get your head into that, you know, yeah, yeah. 12 tone and all that. But it anyway, in a cave. Yeah, so yeah. it was, you know, it, it was, uh, it was interesting that way, you know, that, that, that kind of technique uh, hasn't, uh, I don't think Zoom has, has that right now. Uh, I don't even know, you know, if it, I think a lot of the stuff that I've seen online where you get an ensemble who are they all together, basically, I think, I'm not certain that, uh, you know, that, that's a whole nother technique and a whole nother um, uh, app above um, Zoom at this point. Well, where, where did you, where did it you works, study acting? It works, it works well because you can, you know, you can, you can hear your piece, mm -hmm. you can critique it. You can uh, know, you know, it helps the playwright out that way, you know. Sure. And then you have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, the, the um, um, uh, stars um, and uh, theater people who are doing uh, online music, uh, singing uh, uh, with uh, Playbill. I've seen that uh, and a couple of people. So, you you know, and then you, 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 you try to, I've been working on a, piece that I've been I've had off and on for a long time and uh, so I pull that out so I'm working with that you know uh, and uh, you, you know and, and and so you try to keep yourself busy you know yes that's, that's about it. That. listen we we uh, have to go back a little bit if you don't mind we're gonna talk a little bit about your early years when you were in uh, Spattenburg South Carolina right yeah, Spartanburg, uh, South Carolina, yeah. There we are. And, and <laughs> something really caught my eye because we've been finding this a lot with a lot of the entertainers that we talk to. Uh, they started singing in church and you were a boy soprano. Uh, yes, I can't I tell was. you how many guys we've spoken to, including <laughs> myself, that was a boy soprano. Uh, <laughs> amazing, we, we started singing in church. But why don't you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I started out, um, um, you know, I, I was, uh, went to Catholic school, went to, uh, God, 14 years of Catholic schooling. Um, mm. 
but I started out and in a boys choir, you know, singing on uh, high mass on Sundays, singing Palestrina, you know, Baird four and five part masses, Mozart and, mm -hmm. and uh, Gregorian chant, yeah. you know, um, you well, know, start now. in fact, uh, I, when I uh, had my, one of my auditions, when I was transferring out of um, Xavier University to uh, New England Conservatory in, uh, Bo in, in Boston, New England uh, Conservatory, I did a Gregorian chant as my audition piece. <laughs> 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 and they looked oh. at me, they looked at me, was like, where did he come from? You know, <laughs> what I brought. You know, I said, you know, I, I went all the way back to the root. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> so, not a bad yeah. thing. But uh, yeah, so that's how I that's how I started out with uh, doing. Um, you know, um, like I said, uh, also I sang with the uh, Corpus Christi Boys Choir, and um, we used to uh, uh, on. Um, on uh, Christmas Eve, we used to do the um, NBC Midnight Mass. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it came from a, a couple of times from Corpus Christi. And uh, yeah, so I grew up doing that. And uh, but at the same time, you know, I was uh, also doing doo wop. Yeah, you know? we were just going to talk about that. You yeah. went from boy soprano, you went to doing doo wop stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the thing at the time, you know. I mean, yeah. Uh, God, I, I I flipped out when I heard uh, Frankie Lyman's "Fool Falls." Uh, you know, why do fools fall in love? Yeah, yeah. You know that oh, yeah. was you, you know yeah you know, and um, a little while later I became friends with his uh, brother Frankie Lyman. I mean Louis Lyman. Oh, you know, yeah, you had, you had uh, it was Frankie Lyman in the teenagers, and it was Louis Lyman in the teen tones. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, that's so uh, you know that was my aspiration at that time you know and um, you know we had groups singing in the hallways you know running yeah, down that's to the, right <laughs> running down to the 145th street uh 8th avenue subway because it had a nice echo <laughs> <laughs> <I remember. laughs> wow yeah. you know sure. yeah all that kind of stuff and you know that's and i i stayed in duwap for a while for a little for a little while um did you make any money in it <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit, you know. Um, I uh, like I I I was part of a group called the Dell Chords, um, mm -hmm. and um, the lead singer was um, David Campanella, who was Roy Campanella's son, or I should say his, his um, adopted son, because it right. was uh, it was by his wife's first marriage, mm -hmm. and um, so. Um, but we went to school together. Another guy, Kenny, he was in school with us. It's all high school. You know, we were like t teenagers, 15 years old, 15 and 16. And um, we um, had a group, put it together. Um, we were, um, uh, we would go out to um, David's place to rehearse out in uh, Glen Cove. Uh, and um, got a little play. We got a, a nice shot promotional shot in jet magazine um, and uh you know did a little gigs here and there and um then um <laughs> then things kind of fell apart uh, you know um in terms of um david um <laughs> well my, my i had gotten my best friend uh Al algae you know he uh got uh, in the group and um, one morning, uh, Saturday morning, I think it was, he called me up. He said, man, go get the Daily News. I said, why? He said, go get the Daily News. Get the Daily News and look on the back page. So I go get the Daily News and I look on the back page and there is a paddy wagon, the back of it, like going going away. And looking out the bars is David and our, <laughs> and our valet. And it was it was like... It, it was it, he had you know he had always uh, kind of had this um, 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 streak in him that you know was um, wanted to be part of the you know the 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 gang war days and all that kind of stuff yeah. and and we had, had done the Jack Parr show remember Jack Parr Jack sure. Parr show yeah. and uh, you know he had the Jack Parr check in his in his pocket but he and the ballet decided they wanted to break into a um a drugstore and steal cigarettes and all anyway got caught and all that blew up you know it was yeah. a big mess it was a really so then from there we formed our own group uh 
called the Sierras. And uh, we tromped around trying to make things happen. Back in those days, you did your auditions live. You know, um, you went into, um, you know, the, the, the A&R person from record company and you'd sing, do your stuff. Uh, our manager, Joey, um, was, uh, D'Angelo was, uh, uh, you know, he was, he, he reminded me of the character that um, um, Woody Allen played. What was his name? Something, uh, Rose, I can't think of the, Danny Rose or something like that. I can't remember. But uh, it was a character that uh, um, that um, Woody Allen played that reminded me so much of Joe. And uh, so we traipsed around. I think we did something like about 23, 26 uh, auditions, you know, for uh, record companies. And we decided to break up. And then once, about a year later, he called up and said he had a deal for us and whatnot. So we went and had to put the group back together. <clears throat> and... Um, recorded for uh, George Goldner, who um, was, um, had G Records at one time. And uh, was uh, that's the record that Louis, L I mean, um, uh, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers were on. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we uh, basically thought, uh, you know, this was going to be it. We put, actually put back the original group, the group that did a lot of the running around um, mm -hmm. was kind of a, a you know a, a second group that we put, but we put the original group back together of the Sierras, and um, you know we recorded, <laughs> and I keep trying to tell people back in those days you get on the microphone you record, and they used to it was on acetate, you know. <laughs> You know, it was the act, actual record going around and you put the, yeah. the, the arm of the needle down and record wow. your stuff, you know. I'm talking about way back. <laughs> right. No mistakes. No mistakes tolerated. <clears throat> no, no, man. No mistakes. And, no, and, no, and, no, and no second going back. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, <clears throat> you so how did this it. springboard you to Broadway? How did all of this take you to Broadway? Um, how did that happen? Well, um jesus it's a long journey I, oh, yeah, well, from I, was gonna, there, from... I was gonna interrupt that a minute because clyde did you know that he transferred from fordham university he came down to new orleans to xavier university yes that, i think he, he told me that yes yeah, yeah. so yeah. then he goes but that was for opera wasn't it larry yeah i went down i i went down to uh, uh xavier and uh they had um an opera department a music department um, and um, they used to do opera. I think they had been doing opera food for about 38 years, you know, mm -hmm. and they would collaborate with the New Orleans Opera Company. We did La Traviata and uh, I played Gaston in it. And um, uh, then I, after two years there, I decided I wanted to go to the New England Conservatory of Music. And so I went up there and then Gosh, I, while I was up there, my my best buddy, I think Clyde knows, maybe you might know, uh, Bernie Worrell. Yeah, I was going to ask you about him. Funk yeah. Nadella and David Byrne Talking Head, the keyboard player. Yeah, yeah, Amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard yeah, he, was well, also, he was also a classically trained pianist as oh, well. Oh, yeah, no, Bernie, yeah, Bernie played with the Washington Symphony when he was 10. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> so, know that. <laughs> yes. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Bernie was Bernie was uh was uh, ferocious on the piano, um, but uh, we were best of pals. We you know we uh, uh, did all sorts of things to make money. I remember one winter he and I, um, uh, through a friend of his, uh, had a lot on Mass Avenue, and we were selling Christmas trees. <laughs> we were you know anything to get through school. Then we started working the clubs at night. Um, I started working at a place called the Inner Circle and downstairs was uh paul's mall in the jazz workshop and bernie was playing at basin street south and he was playing with a uh, uh tony williams remember the drummer tony williams yeah, sure uh, yeah well he was, was miles with, davis yeah yeah he was right. playing with it he was playing with his father his father was a sax player and um bernie was playing organ and uh drummer and uh, and a lot of the acts that came in then marvin Gaye came in through there um, you know, a lot of the R&B uh, acts came in through the uh, Bay Street South. So Bernie was, that's where he was playing. And I was playing across town uh, up on uh, Beacon Hill, also at a place called 43. So that's how, uh, you know, I started doing that. And then um, uh, Poor Game Best um, 
had a, a tour going to Israel um, and a buddy of mine and uh, you know, Gail Nelson, remember Gail Nelson? Of course I do, of course. Yeah, well, we are all in school together and we came down and uh, auditioned and uh, so, uh, Mervyn and I got it. And so we went to, um, we went to uh, uh, Israel. Uh, we were there for like two and a half months touring around. Uh, we basically, we had an apartment also. Uh, we would go out and come back. We shared an apartment in, in uh, Tel Aviv. And um, so when I got back to school, my teacher, um, Uta Graf, uh, had left the conservatory and went um, to Manhattan School of Music. And so I was then assigned to another teacher, uh, Mr. Pearson. And um, so it was a whole nother technique. And uh, uh, what, what, what happened also, um, I, I got a little bit ahead of myself. After, um, after Israel came back to school, we had a, um, a tour, uh, a culture exchange tour with the Soviet Union. And so we went and we toured eight cities over in uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, and we were over there for like two and a half, three months. And then when I came back, that's when I found out my, about my teacher having left. And I had like a semester to go. And I was um, assigned to Mr. Pearson. And then when I was there, um, Porgy and Bess called up again and had a national company uh, that was going around um, the states. And... Um, it just um, appealed to me more than uh, having to, <laughs> you know, uh, change techniques and, and um, you know, with another teacher and, and the pressure of putting all this together, you know, for uh, my, my final jury. And uh, it just dawned on me that I was in an artist program and what I would get out of it would probably it would just be like a, you know, a diploma um an art an art in you know uh 80 i think it called it and it dawned on me that uh what i wanted to do in life uh you know a, a piece of paper wasn't going to do that for me either i could sing or i can't sing you know oh. and so i uh left school and uh went out on the road with poor game best and then the musical director from that uh had um the national company uh, for on a clear day. And he hired me to do that. And it just went on and on and on and on from there, you know, one after the other, I just kind of, it wasn't something that I had uh, aspired, I had aspired to do. It just kind of fell into, you know, it fell into me. And, uh, you know, I just feel like, you know, God put me there, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had it, it and I've been able to make a living at it. You know, were, you, uh, were you in the original company of hair? I was with the original company of hair. I didn't do it originally. I, um, I, the company had been running for about six months. Right. But when I had, um, I, um, uh, I had I'd done an sh off-Broadway show called The Believers. And um, from The Believers, I had put together the group I was telling you about, the two girls and myself, the descendants. And that's the group that uh, we opened for Stevie Wonder at the Apollo when he was uh, uh, about 17. Right. And uh, with Peaches and Herb and uh, who else? The Jai Five were also on it. And, um, and then after that, we, um, the, uh, the group, uh, we went to uh, Boston uh, to work, but the, the main thing that happened was that we had a 10 week tour opening for Gladys Knight and the Pips. And what happened was that whole thing, because it was during the time of a lot of the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, black um, uprising um, that was happening at towards the end of the 60s, uh, it scared. Uh, most of, just about all of the um, club owners that had the um, chitlin circuit 
you know, and the Chitlin Circuit, as you know, is in, in um, major cities of, are usually the houses that, you know, uh, have a lot of black artists, you know, like, you know, like the Motown's act, you know what I'm right. saying, there's the Chitlin Circuit that's right. going. Well, that closed. And what you had in the Chitlin Circuit was what they had at the Apollo, which was, uh, you know, a, a band, a house band. And so when these guys, you know, left uh, the um, clubs and they sold it to mostly black uh, um, entrepreneurs, they basically didn't have the kind of money to maintain um, a house band. So all of a sudden you had to become self-contained. And, uh, you know, the, this is, the, the, we had charts that we had made, you know, for our act for like 17 piece bands. And so now we had to try to get gigs where, you know, we could afford who we had, you know, uh, um, and uh, what size band we could carry with us. So right. it became a huge expense and, um, it's, you know, and, and, and a lot of, um, I think after we did Bermuda, um, decided to uh, break, the, break the group up. And then I went back to uh, theater. But while I was doing that, I was approached about doing hair when hair was at the Cheetah, because it was at the Cheetah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, but I had my own group at the time that I was working, so I didn't do it, you know. But uh, later on, after after been up for about six months, and I had left, the, you know, the, broke the group had broken up. Uh, I uh, auditioned and got back into theater that way. Mm -hmm. That was on Broadway. We were doing you were doing hair on Broadway. Yeah, mm -hmm, on Broadway. Yeah, yeah. That you know, it's original company. Yeah, you know? uh, they. Yeah, uh, Mary Seymour was there, right? Mary Seymour. Yeah, Mary Rose Seymour. Davis. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. Yeah, Davis. Yeah, all those guys. You know. Yeah. And. Um, Yes, yeah, so, so that was yeah, yeah. Now, and that's what well, that, that where no, did we meet there? I met you. I was doing here when you were doing it. Somehow yeah. we met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, what I want to know is, how did you jump from hair to Jesus Christ superstar? How did that happen? That was a hard road to land, wasn't it? Um, we uh, well, actually, that, that's a that's a real long story. That one there too, because what happened was, um, was it Frank Asaro, I think, was was the original director of uh, of um, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, they um, didn't talk about. I, I, audition, I auditioned. I I audition for it and um, had a call back, and then somehow Frank had had left uh, the project and it was turned over to Grover Dale, who was a okay. choreographer and then audition again. And then uh, nothing heard, nothing about it. But I, you know, I'm at the same time I'm doing hair. So I'm you know, going back and forth. And then um, Grover was let go. And then Tom O'Horgan got it. Okay. So Tom O'Horgan had, and now he's the We can't the third see your group. eyes, Larry. We can't see your eyes. Oh, oh now yeah. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Tom O'Horgan got it then. And um, so he had uh, asked me to look at it and I did. Um, and uh, when they had the auditions, they had myself, Carl Anderson and Ben Vereen. And so I went in and sang, uh, then came out, Ben went in and sang, came back out, Carl went in and sang, came back out. And um, we waited there for about uh, 45 minutes, just the three of us. And then they asked Ben to go in and sing. And then Carl went in and sang. And then I went in and sang. And then we came back out and we sat there and we waited for about another 30 minutes, you know. And then Carl went in and sang. And I went in. You know, it was that kind of thing that was going. So um, they decided to go for... Um, for uh, the, the Broadway production, they decided to go with um, Ben Vereen. Um, and so um, Tom said he could offer me Simon, but he wanted me to do another show that he had called Inner City. And so uh, it's called Inner City Mother Goose. And so I did that show. Um, it was at the Ethel Barrymore. And um, it was, it was uh, you know, it, it was, 
it was uh, then from from then from Superstar, um, I auditioned later on for the film, and um, got it. You know, because I guess you know I had a kind of a background with with yeah. having you know having done it. So I haven't auditioned so many times. You know, uh, so anyway, that's how all that came about. You know, it's all through auditioning. You know, yeah. and uh, um. Uh, it, it was a uh, it that was an experience you know filming for four and a half months over in israel you know it took four <laughs> and a half months to make yeah. the film well the whole thing was like we did a month first in london um Rehearsals. doing doing, doing uh, the soundtrack oh I and see. then <clears throat> and then um when we got to israel our first two weeks we was spent uh laying in the sun so that so that we could get a a, a proper tan so uh-huh. that so that there would be continuity in the film as a you know <laughs> you know because yeah. you shoot all over the place different parts of the film you shoot you know it's not it's not all you know straightforward from beginning to the end you're jumping all over the place right. so uh they didn't want uh the coloring to change on people as they were shooting you know right. you, you have your tan here and you don't have your tan there you know so we laid around for like two and a half weeks and then worked on the choreography also and then we started work and um yeah it was a it was a good uh yeah it was a good three yeah three months about three months did you have any it. interaction with uh, andrew lloyd weber when you were in london uh no uh not really um he uh we were we were um more with a uh, weber he was he we had some contact with him but not, not weber but um Oh God, what's his name? What, you, you lost me right now. It's co co writer. Oh uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. God, I uh, see. See, that's that's what happens when you get old. They're brain dead now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brain dead is right. See that <laughs> anyway. But no, it didn't have that much. Didn't have that much with uh with uh um with uh, Andrew Lord Weber. Well, I'm not. I'm not certain. I, sometimes I'm not certain if he liked what I did. You know, with it. Um, he's very true. What happened was we were in the studio, and of course I was being very true to the part, singing what he Tim wrote. Rice, yeah, Tim, Tim Rice, yeah, Tim Rice. Tim Rice, yes, yep. yes, yes, Tim Rice. Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, do exactly what he wrote, and um, I did about two takes, and then Jewison came in and said, "Larry, I, I, I don't, I, I want you to take it out, really, just take it out all the way, you know." And so that's what I did, you know, I did a. Um, um, my rendition of it, and he liked it, and we kept it. So I don't know. I never heard from uh, uh, Andrew about it at all. But uh, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> one way or the other. Yeah. You know, but I know he's. I, I think I think he's a stickler for you know for his notes. But hey, Jewison asked me to do it, and that's what I had to do. Yes. Listen, I I think uh, the next question that has to come to mind is favorite roles and favorite people you've worked with over the years. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> you've done so much. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you had yes. you didn't you work with Meryl Streep in uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mother, Mother Courage, Courage, right? Yeah, yeah, Mother Courage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was amazing watching her watching her in a Mother Courage. Watch her her uh, uh, build her character, you know, from beginning to end. You know, little mm-hmm. idiosyncratic things that she would do. You know, adding on to the character, the character's walk. You know, and and uh, how the character stands and and just uh, you know mu- mu- uh, manipulating uh, uh, her 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 own personal thing so that she can bring this character out and her laugh uh, it's uh, it was it was amazing watching that and she's just wonderful really wonderful you, I love you've working had with some her. pretty amazing people to work with you you worked uh, at the Met with James Levine, right? I think oh, was- yeah, uh-huh. yes, yeah, with, uh, yeah, I did my, uh, yeah, debut with him there. And then and, uh, we had Gregory worked- Hines you worked with? with uh, yeah, I worked with Gregory, uh, yeah, I love Gregory, I'm so sorry about him, but yeah, I, wor- uh, I worked with Gregory uh, twice, I did, um, <laughs> I did a piece called Coming Up Town, uh, where uh, it was, um, it was uh, a, a Christmas Carol taking place in Harlem, and of course, he was Scrooge, and I played uh, Christmas Past. And um, they came to me because he had gotten his first movie. <laughs> and they asked me, said, well, Larry, we want you to understudy Gregory. 
And I said, you got to be kidding me. Understudy Gregory, he just said, I don't jab. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, no, Larry, we, want, we need for you to understudy Gregory. And then uh, we're going to give you your own choreography. You don't have to worry about trying to do what Gregory does. And I said, okay, well, all right. So he talked to my agent and they worked it out. And uh, so uh, time is going, time is going, time is going. Nothing, nobody's come to me about anything. Time is going. Finally, bang, he's got to go do his movie and I've got to cover him. I have not had rehearsal the first. I have not had any kind of, uh, you know, I've been watching, thank God, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, um, Peter, <laughs> um, God, uh, Peter Michaels, who was a choreographer, you know, he um, had an appointment. He had to be out of town <laughs> and he left me with his assistant. And so, uh, so we got there, and, uh, and you know, I knew this. I knew I knew the part. I had gotten the songs and stuff, and uh, and I was pretty uh, okay on the on the. Um, I was all right on the staging, and um, so. But when it came time for the for the for the choreography, you know, um, tapping wise, no way I could come. So so yeah. I said I said I said to them I said well instead of tapping to fill up that space. Let's just go back to the bridge or you know, whatever, blah, 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 you know, repeat or reprise here, do this reprise. So that's what we started to do, reprising this song, reprising that. So it became a whole nother, you know, uh, uh, production number, you know, and but there was one that I could not get away from. And that was uh, that was uh, with the little kid, uh, which was uh, supposed to be Scrooge as a kid. And he did a tap number with the kid. They did this thing together. And so I'm trying to figure out how am I going to get around this? So I learned the, I learned the first, you know, like the first uh, uh, eight bars of the, of the, um, of the number, you know, me and the kid had it in unison and it wasn't that, that hard, but, you know, did it, blah, 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 blah. And then I gave it to him and then he, he'd take off, you know, and then he was throwing it back to Gregory and Gregory would take off and doing what he was doing on that. So and when the kid, I, I gave it to the kid. He did his whole tapping and tapping and tapping. And then the kid threw it back to me, right? And I stood there and I started ham boning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> because, I, because I was an old guy anyway, you know? So yeah. I just started yeah. ham boning and making all those, uh, the, the rhythmic thing happening with the, with the body. So, you know, that was, I'll never forget it that. It worked but out. That, yeah, it worked out. It, it worked, worked out. out. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and the, audience, the audience loved it. And I... Uh, you know, I did it for about a week, and uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, one of the um, uh, one of the uh, songwriters um, guy came to came at the next day and gave me this box, and I opened it up, and there were these two. <laughs> it says, "Here's to Larry," and it was these two globes, these two uh, golden globes. It said, "Here's to Larry, you had the biggest balls on Broadway." <laughs> 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 well, Larry, but, you you then. Later on, you make a change in the career again, I guess, so you add something to your resume. When you become a director, you start oh, yeah. to direct. What, yeah. and from what I see, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw that you were directing operas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I mean, I, I, so I, uh, um, you know, I went back to my kind of my my roots, you know, and I I uh, but the thing was I did Porgy and Bess, which I knew, uh, I did that with uh, the Atlanta Opera, and uh, then I did it with the Memphis Opera, and then um, I did the Macbeth, and um, by uh, uh, um, Giuseppe uh, 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 Verdi, and uh, then I went and I did uh, um, Barbara Seville, and um, it was. Uh, you know, it, it it was it was it was an area that I was really you know familiar with, and um, I had fun doing it. It was great, you know, and there were proving pieces. It, was, it, it, it it you know it's 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 um, it, you know it's not like Broadway. You know, it's 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 like you you really are with me. I try to give the um, singers, you know. Um, put them in positions and things whereby they can really shine their instruments because mm -hmm. in the opera you know it really is about this about the about, about the singing yeah you know and uh you know so you don't want to give them any acrobatics and stuff you know to do 
uh, it wasn't exactly park and bark, but you know, <laughs> as, as they say. I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> bark and bark. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got so, accused of that myself once in a while. <laughs> yeah. So no, that was, that was it was it was a lot of fun. The guys, the people, uh, you know, really uh, enjoyed it, and they uh, and and you know so. But but uh, then again. Um, you know, you have people who champion you, you know, the guy that was doing uh, at the Atlanta, then I went back to the Atlanta Opera, I did a, another production of uh, Porgy and Bess that was quite uh, interesting. It was done uh, on, with the background uh, on, um, on big, huge screens, two huge screens. And uh, uh, you were projecting uh, the scenes from uh, that, that you were building uh, your, your story around, you know, uh, and the, uh, the, the 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 city was like scaffolding. Um, Catfish Row was like scaffolding that was going along in the back. So you could you could have your hurricanes. You know, you had your real hurricanes that are going on visually, um, and uh, your picnic. All, it was it was quite interesting. You know, it was a technique that they were developing for the military uh, to um, take these screens out on uh, patrols and um, for exercises and things rather than coming all the way back, you know, they could do what they were doing out there showing. And so it was, it was a technique that we tried. Uh, and uh, it was, it was interesting. That's and what about, what about your role in waitress? Was that a lot of fun for you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I loved old Joe. Yeah. That was a great role. I was able to do some, some, some comedy and I was able to sing. I was able to, you know, have a a, a, a good storyline. Um, it was it was a, it was a, it was a wonderful role, and 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 I don't know of any other role where ninety five percent of my acting was done sitting down. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you but no, park and bark, I, you mean? <laughs> uh, park and bark, right? Yeah. No, I yeah no, I I loved that role. It was a it was a he was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with him. And, Any uh, chance you'll be uh, heading back to that if this thing ever opens up again? Oh no, we had closed um, on uh, the fifth, so right. it, we didn't close because of the uh, because of the virus. Uh, we closed because uh, you know time was up, you know, and uh, they you know new show is in there. But yeah, I had a, I had a good time with it. I I you know as you know I I started out three months on Broadway and then I took it on the road for fourteen months. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and then came back and uh, did another year. So um, I, uh, I I had a good time. Was never bored with it. You know at all. You know. Well, you st will you still be directing for the Netherlanders? Uh, I I I I don't I don't I don't know I don't I don't right. I don't it I'm not, I'm not, cer happens, yeah. not certain about that. I mean. Yeah. Um, I uh, no, you said the Needlelanders. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I haven't directed for the Needlelanders. I thought you were working for them, directing Poigi and Best companies. No, 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 no. That was uh, that's a company that uh, is based in uh, Munich. Oh, Munich. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've uh, been, and you know, by York Lee. Of course. Know. Yeah, yeah. By York and I. Of course, line. Of course, line. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She, uh, she directed it and I was um, um, uh, consultant and um, worked with her on this on the um, uh, uh, the characters and staging and stuff but uh, we've changed some things around uh, I've I, I started doing it and then keeping it in order and then changing things uh, here and there according to uh, you know the size of the houses because we were working in um, you know, uh, traveling in in Europe, and some of the houses were smaller. We had a big five five story um, a five house um, um, set, and what we had to do sometimes would break the houses down to four houses. And when they broke it down to four houses, then I'd have to restage, right? You know that. And sometimes we broke it down to three houses, depending on the size. You know, so there was a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. And um, then we would refresh it, and I would. I would uh, uh, call Bayok up and uh, say, you know, I want to do this with the show. I want to change this and do that. And, uh, you know, she would give me basically the okay. And uh, then I would change here and there. So we became like, a, I became like basically associate di director of that. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, most of the shows, uh, you know, I, uh, I, 
I did perform and direct in it, but recently it's just been directing, you know. Okay. Larry, I have uh, a, a, a right, bunch yeah. of students that will be watching this, and we asked them if they had questions for you, and two questions came up, uh, and I hope you'll be able to uh, expound a little on those. What role do you feel the arts play in the development of young people, and how important is it to be part of the school curriculum, not just be an extracurricular activity? Oh, I think it's uh, very important. You know, so many ideas are expressed through the arts, you know, uh, and a lot of times, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the arts can uh, uh, say things that, uh, you know, uh, in a way that uh, really opens you up, you know, to ideas, um, inspire you, um, that's that, that. I mean, that's how I, you know, I I view it. It's a, a critical role, you know, in the in the school you know system. It's part of our culture, you know. It's uh, theater, you know. We should never ever lose it. Those great plays that uh, we have, you know, mm -hmm. um, people should uh, be able to enjoy it and see them in their in their form as they were meant to be seen, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's that's I, I think the art you know we we are a oh god is i can't i can't imagine a world without the theater or without yeah, the we had, arts, uh, the we, arts had paul, we had paul valone uh city councilman on last night and paul was very uh, he's a big supporter of the arts he believes in it strongly in the schools yeah. and uh as i am also i've testified in albany and in washington to stop the cutting of arts programs in the schools. Uh, well, and, and Paul, just this morning, it comes out that the city of New York is going to cut many of their art programs budget-wise because of the problem with the pandemic and, and everything that's going on right now. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Well, I saw, I, saw, I saw a list. Um, it's, it said, uh, uh, you know, the, the, um, the, you know, the, the, the essentials you know, and they had a list of what of essentials and the non-essentials and the number one thing were artists. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, they, it just, it, it just blew my mind, you know. How they figured that's a non-essential part of, of education yeah. when we know since 1958, every study that's been done in education shows that kids that are in the performing arts do better in school. Yeah. And to graduate, get better jobs, go on to college. And yeah. Yeah. they do. And if you want to use today's so-called uh, brain thrust, they score 25 points, 125 points higher on their SATs. All right. Yeah. 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 Well, it, 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 the, I mean, it, it, it teaches you to use your brain. I mean, you know, you're, you're not brain dead. You have to like really when you get into a story. Or uh, you see a play, you see a musical. I mean, it takes you somewhere else, you know, completely. But you you you. You know, you can you can start thinking uh, abstractly. You know, it's, to start in confidence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Uh, that, yeah. That's a real thing. The other question that the kids wanted to know from you, if you could offer three pieces of career advice. Oh, three pieces. Here they are. One, study. Two, <laughs> study. Three, study. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, sounds like Jimmy Heath. Practice, right. practice, and practice. <laughs> hey, Andrew, Andrew. Yeah. Before we close up, we're almost at the close. Read him that question. I want to see how he answers that. Oh, all right. Clyde sent me this question, and he, he it was it's really quite interesting, but it's philosophical, Larry. It'd probably be great for you to to answer this. In my life, I've noticed that some people remain marginally successful. I think it's because they remain marginally aggressive and marginally focused. It is hard to find success casually. No successful person ever achieves success casually. All of the elements that go into making anything a success takes concentrated and focused effort. Bringing them together casually at your own leisure or whenever you feel like it is living a dream that will never happen. From electric thinking... Larry, what do you feel about that assertion? That's a mouthful. <laughs> I feel like there's nothing more to say. <laughs> it, it, it is quite good, isn't it? 
if you don't <laughs> throw yourself wholeheartedly into something. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was like uh, um, I remember uh, a, a, a guy in my building. He was uh, taking trumpet, and he was taking trumpet, and then you know he's going to school, and, and then I saw him, and uh, um, about a year later, he had no trumpet. You know, and I said to him, I said, well, what happened? You were a trumpet. He said, nah, well, you know, I just put, I said, what? I said, you were you waiting for it to take you over or for you to take it over? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, that, that, that was the, and that's the bottom line of it. You right. know, you gotta, you gotta get into it wholeheartedly, you know, you, you take, uh, but, but, you know, I, I, uh, and, and you also have to have a talent for it. You know, that my teacher, Uta Graf, one of the things I loved about her you know, because, you know, you're in a college and they assign, uh, they assign you students. And so she would, they, you go in uh, uh, to her for the first time and she would play scales and she would listen to you go up and down the scales and whatnot. And, uh, uh, and the school used to get upset with her because she would tell them she was going to, she, and she had this German accent and she would say, darling, you know, they uh, tell me, can you do anything else? Because uh, you'll never be a singer. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and her whole thing was like, you know, it's not there. Why are you going to waste your time and money chasing something that you not, won't ever be able to achieve vocally? Okay. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, but uh, a lot of times the schools don't care about that. They just want that tuition. You know? Sure. You know, that so. is a problem in today's world. Well, last question for us uh, is what's on the agenda for Larry Marshall, what's coming next? What do you What do you hope for next now? Oh well, you know, um, gosh, I, 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 um, I, 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 these two plays, I like, I was saying, um, they are uh, have have been. Uh, we've been doing some readings on them. Hopefully, something will happen with that. Um, I have a one man show that I pulled out and looking at uh, I, and I've been I've pulled it out off and on and off and on for so many years it's on Burt Williams mm -hmm. you know yeah, uh, yeah sure. the blackface uh, comedian uh, turn of the century turn of the 20th century comedian and uh, I've been looking at that I don't know if I'm going to do something with it I look at it and I go well you know maybe maybe not you know it's it's uh, it's it's uh, something I've been toying with off and on because I really when you look at him, he was like the first, you know, superstar, you know, um, black superstar in, in the early 1900s. And uh, well, well, he and, and Step and Fetch it, right? But yeah. uh, uh, Step and Fetch was much later. You yeah. Know? But he wasn't really that kind of Step and Fetch. He wasn't that at all. He, but he kind of. Uh, you know, tried to give the, 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 through his humor, you know, a true representation of some kind of life uh, of, of um, you know, of, of uh, black experience, you know. Um, but he, of course, he was also caged in by the times, you know, uh, yeah. you could only go so far, you could only do so much, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he had to make a living at what he was doing, you know. Uh, but he he um, but he he was uh, he was huge. He was uh, uh, um, um, like a headliner at the Zegfeld Follies. But the thing is, when you look at it, he's at the Zegfeld. But he was not allowed to associate with any of the actors. He had to stay in his dressing room. You know, um, he uh, couldn't appear with uh, any of uh, the, the the young ladies in the shows. And it was a lot of stuff, you know. And mm -hmm. yeah, when he toured, you know, he had to take the service elevators where everybody else goes to the front, you know, things like that. He has a lot of indignities he had to go through. And, um, you know, I, 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 uh, people look back on that time and see him and uh, what he represents with, uh, with shame as opposed to seeing what he had to go through in order to you know, make a living for himself and also to open doors, you know, and he, they, he's one of the people that kind of opened these doors for folks to go on, you know, uh, with the, where we are today. It, you know, right. you, it's somebody's it's always somebody before you that basically opened the doors for you, you know, yeah. and he, you know, from back in his day, he was, uh, you know, one of those forces. He was just amazing. He was huge. 
So uh, I have that, you know, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. I don't know if I'm going to uh, approach it myself or maybe I can find somebody else that I would like piece, to work though. with. That could piece has been done before. So yeah, that no, be yeah, fresh. yeah. And then I've thought about doing it as a podcast, you know, mm-hmm. um, and have it have it like maybe uh, uh, like an old time radio show. You know, when you you know listen to something on the radio, I I don't know. It's it's one of those things I'm toying with right now, but you know, who, who knows what what what's right. gonna you know what's gonna happen? You know, this is a whole new area we're in. I think yeah, it's somebody. I keep saying that probably what we should do is look back at uh, how um, uh, the entertainment world handled the 1918 Spanish flu. You know, how did the, you know, how did we uh, handle it there? How did it come, how did the uh, theater come back behind that? You know, because it was surely there, there was, I mean, people were dying left and right, you know, things yeah. like it, it was devastating. So, um, we, you know, we, we don't know, but I, I, there will, I, there will always be theater, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll transform, you know, in some way. Um, I think uh, it's going to be a little while before we'll be able to have people back in the seats like we had them before. I don't know how long that'll take, but uh, you know, who knows, it might start off with the theaters selling every other seat, you know, so you can keep some sort of distance between folks, you know, I, I, I don't know. But, um, but is how, you know, what happens on stage, you know, it, yeah. it, you know, how do you stage that, you know, do you stage that according to, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, yes, it's, it's all that challenges coming, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of challenges that are coming up. You know, Larry, so. Clyde and I sure could listen to you for hours and hours. It's such a, uh, I, I couldn't even tell you how enjoyable it is to listen to your stories over the years. And I uh-huh. sure hope you will come back and, and share some more of them with us. All uh, right, I maybe, will, maybe. I will, as oh, long yes, as Larry. Clyde. As long as Clyde comes up with some of them, t- <laughs> those, those, <laughs> that, that statement he did at the end, that was wonderful. Oh, you like that, huh? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so listen, send See, me a Clyde? copy. <laughs> send me a Gotta copy. Gotta send a copy of that. To him, that that <laughs> would work. Larry, we sure do hope you enjoy visiting with us tonight. And again, we hope you will come back. Your yes. stories, uh, you have an awful lot to share with a lot of the young people. They can learn an awful lot by listening to somebody like you. And they should go back and look at all these wonderful performances. I'll tell you, just doing some research on this stuff, you know, there's stuff I forgot that you were involved with that I got to look at some of these videos. Absolutely incredible. You are an amazing entertainer and uh, certainly are a treasure for American theater and film. I hope you you will come back. Thank you, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Marshall. All right, take care. Good night, Larry. All right. right. (laughs) Uh, folks, Clyde, this guy is just amazing. He's definitely, I wish people would take the time to listen to a guy like that and just be a sponge, you know, to to listen to all the things that he went through, how gracious he is, uh, by spreading these stories, you know, telling him these stories, the immense talent. Oh, you can't even get into the the talent. Well, uh, we sure do hope he comes back. Now, we have a very special announcement, and I'm sure this is very close to your heart because you're the guy that had a lot to do with this. Uh, on Friday, June 19th at 7 p.m., live on Facebook, there'll be a tribute to NEA jazz master Jimmy, Jimmy Heath. That's right. At Flushing Town Hall, we'll celebrate the life and legacy of the master, James Little Bird Heath. Uh, Jimmy and was there'll be the, film clips. Yeah, from Benito film de clips. Rivera, Mona Heath, his son Emma Tume, Jimmy Owens, Barry Harris, Dorf and Kirk, and on and on. It's going to be beautiful. Jimmy was a great friend of the Josephine Foundation. Uh, we honored him uh, a few years ago, actually, and uh, he passed away at the age of 93 this past January. And uh, he actually was to return to Flushing Town Hall on stage to conduct the Queen's Jazz Orchestra on June 19th. So right. this is going to be a very, very special event. It'll be live streamed on Flushing Town Hall's Facebook page. That's www.facebook.com slash Flushing Town Hall. 
Uh, another thing, it's sponsored and all of the funds will be used to support the Jimmy Heath Scholarship Endowment Fund at Queens College. This will be a very, very special night. Uh, I, I recommend it highly for everybody. We'll be promoting it uh, throughout the week and I hope you forget to turn it on on Friday night. Right, Clyde? That's right. Don't forget to join us next week when our special guest will be American cellist and composer, the founder and chairman and artistic director of Millennium Music. That's Mr. Michael Fitzpatrick. Who Stand also up. traveled personally with the Dalai Lama. Ah, there you are. Incredible I'm cellist. Sure you're going to have a lot of fun asking him questions. Oh, man. You're very close with Michael. He also won the, he won the recipient of the Prince Charles Award. That's pretty special, too. He's playing with orchestras. He's amazing. Well, he's an amazing... What he does with a cello is unexpected. I'm, I'm yeah, telling you. you got to see It's going to be a very special night. Stay advised of all the events by following the Josephine Foundation on our Facebook page and Instagram account. A big time thanks to our special guest, a very special man, and a good friend of ours, Mr. Larry Marshall. So on behalf of my co-host, Mr. Clyde Ballard, our producer, Gio Vitozzi, and myself, Peace, strength, and love until we see you next week on Odds and Ends Life Entertainment Theater in the Arts. Good night, everybody. Good night, and stay bright. Amen, brother. <laughs>